The bombshell exploded during a mundane conversation with my parents. Allowance? You never received an allowance? My jaw dropped. How could something like this be kept hidden for so long? At 29, I'd been married to John for four years. One evening, I walked into something unsettling. Cans of beer littered the floor. John's face flushed a concerning red. Whoa, John, I approached cautiously. What's going on? He snapped, an edge to his voice. Enough. I can't take it anymore. My heart hammered. John constantly complained about his work, but this felt different. What do you mean? And since when do you drink like this? Not your business. It's my lousy boss. He wasn't wrong. John railed against his company endlessly. Still, the situation screamed urgency. I tried calming him down. Rough day, huh? Stew's on for dinner. Let's eat together. But my optimism fell flat. His expression remained stormy. He kept drinking, prompting a concerned question. Hey, John, are you okay? Remember work tomorrow? A heavy sigh escaped his lips. I'm done, Emma. I'm not going to work tomorrow. What? The word slammed into me. You're not going to work? What happened? Was it a fight with his boss? Just fired, he muttered, the weight of the word sinking in for both of us. Fired? It was a hammer blow. Why, so suddenly? Don't ask. Out of the blue. He shrugged. Poor management, cost-cutting, doesn't matter. I'm done with that place anyway. Done? Relief wasn't the first emotion. Our current home depended on both our incomes. Groceries, bills, even money we sent to his parents. Everything relied on our combined income. But, John, we can't just... Just let me be today, he mumbled, downing another drink. He was clearly intoxicated, and the situation was spiraling. Without his income, how could we keep supporting his parents? The next morning, I found John passed out on the couch, surrounded by empty cans. After cleaning up the mess, I dialed my father-in-law. Hello? This is Emma. Sorry to call so early, but something's come up. John, he was... fired. My father-in-law's voice crackled with disbelief. Fired? Is this for real? That's what he says. Something about management changes and cost-cutting. Shame gnawed at me. John got the job through his parents' connections, and now he'd lost it. Looking back, I understood John's increasing irritability. Ever since we married, he'd nursed a secret, a gambling addiction. In the beginning, I'd seen him off cheerfully, believing him when he claimed to be working late. Take care. Have a good day. Overtime again, he'd reply with a practiced smile. But the truth started leaking. A stray cigarette smell his growing aversion to his once-favorite sports team, gambling on games, the increasing absences. John, the gentleman I married, was changing. The facade crumbled as his addiction took hold. The tension hung heavy in the air. Work? You're serious about quitting? John snapped, dismissing my question with a curt wave of his hand. My money, my decision. He stormed out the door, leaving me speechless. This wasn't the first time. Every gambling binge ended the same way, John returning empty-handed, desperation etched on his face. The pleas for just a few hundred dollars, honey, promises to double it back, all evaporated with the morning light. His gambling had transformed him. The gentle man I married was replaced by a stranger, consumed by his addiction. The justifications became increasingly absurd. It's my entertainment, he'd scoff, dismissing my concerns. Just one win and we'll be set. This delusional optimism fueled the fire. One night, I finally snapped. Look, John, you haven't hit a big win, ever. It's time to face reality. But my words were like pebbles thrown at a fortress. He shifted the blame, accusing me of pushing him to borrow money by refusing to lend a few bucks. I didn't refuse to help, I exclaimed, frustration boiling over. We're drowning in debt, John. Our savings are gone, and I had to take a loan just to keep us afloat. His response was chilling. Fine, then lend me the money now. I'll win it back, just you wait. This was rock bottom. My future, our marriage, hanging by a thread. With a heavy heart, I confided in my in-laws. Their arrival was a much-needed intervention. Do you even realize you have a family? My father-in-law thundered. Emma is your wife, not your ATM. Shame finally flickered in John's eyes. I'm so sorry, Emma, he mumbled, the familiar charm replaced by genuine remorse. 
My father-in-law continued, This behavior is unacceptable. You have a wife who loves you. Don't throw it away. Those words seemed to break through the fog of John's addiction. He apologized profusely, promising to change. Seeing their desperation, their genuine concern, I decided to give him another chance. My in-laws stepped in further. They took charge of John's debt, secured him a new job, and even provided temporary financial support while he got back on his feet. Grateful for their intervention, I began sending them a monthly payment of $500 as a token of appreciation. It felt like a small way to repay their kindness. Now, with John's job seemingly insecure, my stomach churned with a new fear. Breaking the news about halting the payments was going to be devastating. Father-in-law, I began, my voice trembling. I'm so sorry, but with John's job situation, his response was unexpected. Don't worry, Emma. It's the company's decision, nothing you could control. Relief washed over me, tempered by another bombshell. About that money you mentioned, he continued, his voice laced with confusion. We never received any remittances, not a penny. My heart plummeted. You... You didn't receive the dollar five hundred every month? The memory of carefully counting the bills, placing them in the envelope, handing it to John. It couldn't be real. We just checked with your mother-in-law, his voice grew concerned. She doesn't know anything about it either. Panic surged through me. Had John gambled away the money meant for his own parents? The horrifying truth dawned on me. Emma, what's going on here? My father-in-law's worried voice cut through the thickening fog of suspicion. My voice trembled as I confessed. I don't know, but I have been giving John money every month for you. Father-in-law's response was swift. Emma, can we come over tonight? Let's keep this between us for now. The implication hung heavy. The money hadn't reached them. My carefully counted bills, the trust I placed in John, it all crumbled. Fury bubbled within me. He'd gambled away the money meant for his own parents. An hour later, the front door creaked open. John's surprise upon seeing them was evident, a flicker of something I couldn't quite place. Dad? Mom? What are you doing here? Father-in-law launched into a gentle inquiry. John, is there something you'd like to tell us? My husband's act was flawless. What are you talking about? Emma's as confused as I am. Could you explain? Before he could weave his web of lies further, I snapped. Stop it, John. Tell the truth. His wide eyes were a comical contrast to the storm brewing within me. What are you on about? Don't play dumb, I spat. Where's the money I've been giving you for your parents? A telltale flush crept up his neck. Uh, well, Emma, there's a reason. A reason? Explain it then, I pressed, voice laced with icy calm. Where did it go? His bravado faltered. I, I can't say. Both sets of eyes burned into him. The silence stretched, thick with unspoken accusations. Finally, his shoulders slumped. I'm so sorry, he stammered. I, I used it on slots. The words echoed in the room, a sickening blow. Even after everything, he'd fallen back into the clutches of gambling. You promised, I cried, tears prickling my eyes. We were making amends, giving back to them. Mother-in-law's hand, gentle yet firm, landed on my shoulder. Father-in-law turned to John, his voice firm. And the job situation? Laid off, you said? John flinched. Yes, that's right. John, any further lies will only make things worse. His father's gaze softened slightly. If you've been dishonest before? Before he could finish, John blurted out, I'm sorry. I was fired for poor performance, not layoffs. Speechless, I stared at him. His gamble had extended beyond money. Work performance, father-in-law thundered. What exactly were you doing? John's voice dropped to a mumble. They found out I'd been skipping work to go to the casino. A wave of despair washed over me. All the trust, the forgiveness, the effort to rebuild shattered. My husband hung his head, a pathetic shadow of the man I loved. His mother wept silently, while his father's anger crackled in the air. John launched into a desperate string of justifications, but they fell on deaf ears. I'll do better at the next job, he pleaded. It was just bad luck this time. But the damage was done. The frustration that had been simmering boiled over. Divorce, I whispered, 
the word hanging heavy in the air. A stunned silence followed. John's jaw dropped. Emma? Divorce? Are you serious? Divorce? John's voice echoed in the room, incredulous. You're serious, Emma? My voice, laced with the remnants of unshed tears, was firm. Absolutely. Do you even understand what you've done? Stealing money meant for your own parents? It's despicable. He sputtered, a desperate joke falling flat. A bit extreme, wouldn't you say? Extreme? You gambled away money meant to help your parents, money I specifically gave you for them. My anger, tightly coiled for days, finally erupted. This isn't some misunderstanding, John. It's betrayal, twice over. How can I trust you? His father, the ever-calm voice shattered by disappointment, spoke for the first time. We don't consider you a son anymore, John. Your actions have broken that bond. John's face drained of color. Wait a minute! Emma, Mom, Dad, you can't mean that. Forgive me, please. Tears streamed down his face, but my resolve held firm. This charade had gone on for far too long. Get the divorce papers, John. Now. He stumbled into the study, returning with the documents. His hand shook as he signed, the finality of the act hanging heavy in the air. Thank you for everything, I said, my voice surprisingly steady. To my former in-laws, I added, goodbye. With a final look at the man I once loved and the life we could have built, I turned and walked out the door. John's pleas followed me down the hallway. Emma, wait, we can work this out, I promise. But I didn't stop. I wouldn't. John's parents, their faces etched with disappointment, followed my lead. We left him to face the consequences of his actions, the burden of debt, and the hollowness of broken trust. It turned out his gambling debts had amassed into a monstrous problem. Creditors hounded him, forcing him to constantly move, never finding a secure footing. News of his struggles reached me through whispers, but I felt no pity. This was his path, not mine. My life, however, blossomed. Freed from the toxic cycle of deceit and addiction, I thrived. I remained close to his parents, a bond forged in hardship. We shared meals, laughter, and a newfound sense of peace. We were a family by choice, not by blood, and it felt stronger than ever. Marrying John had been a colossal mistake, but it had inadvertently led me to an unexpected treasure. Two amazing people I could truly call family. Now, my focus was on enriching their lives and creating beautiful memories, a stark contrast to the darkness left behind.